It's public forum of the Lincoln Board of Education. Uh, Dr. Gesford, would you please call roll? Uh, Mr. Boswell. Present. Mrs. Danning. Here. Uh, Mrs. Duncan. Here. Mr. Mayhew. Present. Ms. Mumgard. Ms. Mumgard is excused. Uh, Mr. Schulte. Mr. Schulte is en route and will probably be joining us uh, at some time in the middle of the meeting. And Ms. Byer. Here. We have a quorum to conduct business. Thank you. Uh, next, I would note that the Open Meeting Act is posted at the back of the room if anyone wants to take a look at that. And that brings us uh, to the uh, festivities of the afternoon, the 2016-17 preliminary budget presentation. Dr. Standish. Good evening and thank you. Um, I will hit the highlights of the budget this evening in an overview format, knowing that we had a work session just a sh few short weeks ago where we went by line by line item detail. The purpose of this evening is to hear from the public. So we'll just give the introductory overview and I'll go pretty quickly and we'll save plenty of time for public input, public comment. Um, we'll talk about the process for the budget, revenue information, expenditure information, a summary, and then have time for feedback. We are in the middle of what is a lengthy process that takes a lot of work from a great team of people. And we are in our presentations, a reminder that our second work session, which has traditionally been in July, we've moved that up to June to get information out into the community a little bit earlier. So that'll be Thursday night at five o'clock here at district office. Will, that will be followed by our next public forum input session at Goodrich Middle School at 7 p.m. So we'll conclude that work session, um, the 6 o'clock, 6.15, clearly no later than 6.30, so we can make our way to Goodrich Middle School and represent a little bit different geography in the community as well. Um, we've had a key presentation already. Um, the LIBA group had a presentation last week, and we stand ready for any community presentations and we always welcome an opportunity to talk about the budget and that takes us into the hearing and approval into August and September. Um, traditionally, property taxes have made up a majority revenue stream for the school district that still holds true in this budget with just over 50%. I think it's important to kind of set the backdrop of what you'll see in the budget. Prior to 2013-2014, the school district was very restricted with revenue, but growing in population. So in 13-14, the primary focus was on addressing growth. 14-15, we were able to address growth and bring on the technology plan. And 15-16, we started planning for opening new schools as a result of the bond issue. So that really gives you a glimmer of the past few years and where we've been and where we're headed. We know that there's a tremendous interaction between property value, growth, state aid, and the school district investment. This history of property tax levy shows the 1617 anticipated levy. Um, that would be the lowest levy in recent history and represent a seven cent decrease in the last 10 years. State aid is responsive to property value. Um, Nebraska makes a conscious effort to use property as a primary funding stream for schools. Nebraska ranks 49th out of 50 <coughs> states for state sources being the funding stream for school districts. We are anticipating a slight decrease in the overall property tax rate for the school district. We will talk briefly tonight about a shift from the general fund levy to the building fund levy and some of the reasons behind that potential decision that's in front of the board and in front of the community. We also have slight decreases in the bond fund and the qualified capital purpose undertaking fund due to very modest valuation growth. We are estimating that valuation would grow 2.3% um, for this upcoming school year. That is our estimate. One cent of levy generates just under $2 million, about 1.9 million. And you can also see what one cent of levy generates for the average homeowner. Growth is a huge part of our planning here in Lincoln Public Schools. And we are projecting, once again, a very large growth in the student population for next year. Right now, we're estimating about 950 additional students um, looking into next year. As we looked at our 15-16 budget, and we went to roll it forward for 16-17, we looked at what are the major categories of investment that we're making when we look at those changes. Those major categories are captured in this graphic with negotiation and salaries, school staffing, very much driven by growth, new schools driven by growth, investment in technology, and early childhood district-wide items. 
just walking through at a very high level some of those different categories for each piece of that increase. You can see the negotiations and school staffing taking up the majority amount in this category along with new schools. We also have a little bit of recruitment and retention that we're looking at based on the employment climate that we're facing for areas that are hard to fill, very transitional positions. School staffing representing a solid third of the budget increases really looks at regular education staffing to support growth. We also have an, a push that we're making as far as investment in addressing the social, emotional, and mental health needs of students. So there's an increased investment in social workers, treatment nurses, we have academic interventions to support the graduation rate goal, special education staffing, ELL staffing, and various investments in our schools. New schools, so we'll remove our startup cost that we had in the budget for starting up Wysong and Nuremberger. We will add staffing for startup costs for more, and we'll open and operate both the Nuremberger Education Center and Wysong Elementary School. We have additions with additional square footage, and we're also looking at outfitting a district training center at the recently purchased what will be the future food storage warehouse. There's a component of that building that can also be turned into a training facility. In the area of technology, we're adding instructional coaches to support the rollout of the Chromebooks at the elementary level and two high schools. We have some increased email threat protection. We are looking at a new business operating system. We're on an operating system. They asked 400. It's a green screen. It's about 30 years old. Um, digital support for curriculum. And we're also looking at extended hours at a few high schools, possibly a middle school, and some opportunities for families that go into the evening hours in the area of, to support technology. In the area of early childhood, our Head Start partner faced new federal guidelines this year. And in applying for the new round of grant, there was an expectation that the Head Start program move to a full day program. Lincoln Public Schools has always had a blended funding stream where Head Start was one funding stream along with General Fund, Title I, many others. And students were in an integrated program. So if our program were to simply roll to the new Head Start guidelines, we would take all of our half day rooms and make them full day rooms and we would be significantly reducing the number of seats available to serve students. So we looked at Head Start then rolling to create full day programming out in the community to increase the accessibility to quality early childhood and the school district then maintaining the half day program. We also had a few adjustments within staffing in early childhood. Our district wide items, our support within the curriculum area, student services area. We are looking at the fresh fruit and vegetable program which is a federally funded program that comes to nutrition services. This enhancement of that program would ensure that we could serve all Title I schools with that. We also have some adjustments related to transportation, um, CLCs, and then HR and custodial supplies. We talked a little bit about this budget proposal does include a general fund levy of $1.45. Then half a penny would come from that $1.5 limit to fund the building fund. And as the planning committee and others talked about the facility needs of the school district, it's important to kind of paint the backdrop of the facilities we have. So we have 68 facilities. This would include more in Wysong that are opening, over 7 million square feet, 1.2 billion in assets, and 11 undeveloped sites. The building fund can be used to so support site acquisition, purchasing existing facilities for district use or construction alteration of facilities. The building fund is where you receive your proceeds from a bond sale. Um, it's also where you can have a levy to generate additional revenue to support building fund projects. We know that the recent legislative session decreased the qualified capital purpose undertaking fund from 5.2 cents to 3 cents. So that's becoming an increasingly limited resource for the school districts and we have the depreciation fund where we can purchase equipment. The general fund is also where we might equip, do furnishings and smaller changes to facilities. We also have a maintenance account in the general fund. That's where we would do roof repair, but maybe not roof replacement. The one thing we keep watching is growth and the number of lots, the way the city is expanding, and watching the 2040 comp plan process. 
That process is under review currently, but we do receive regular reports on where growth is occurring throughout the city. So we do want to look at our sites throughout the city, make sure we're keeping up with that growth. We also have current student housing. So for example, North Star, where we are looking at housing more students, some ways that we could maybe make changes at North Star to accommodate North stu more students. And we also have the demand where we have to keep up on life cycle management. Here's a sample of just one life cycle management schedule from our facilities and maintenance staff. This one happens to be roofs. So if you're keeping up and maintaining current facilities as well. All of that comes together to articulate the need for the investment in the building fund. Um, many priorities are in front of the board and in front of the community and tough choices as far as where to invest fu funds take place every day. This gives you a little bit of a historical perspective. The building fund in 2007, 2008 was two cents and then the money was moved over to within the dollar five levy to the general fund levy. When we look at Lincoln Public Schools, we're currently 227th out of 245 in per pupil spending. Um, we spend about 10,500 per pupil. And the one thing we always keep in mind is our growth. Managing a growing budget with limited resources is really the story we've had and continue to have. We are expecting to grow by 950 students, which is equal to more than 206 school districts in the state of Nebraska. We do have a one-page summary. All of this documentation is available on our website, um, and we're happy to answer any questions or provide for public feedback at this time. Very good, thank you. Okay, so this is a uh, public forum, and we are at the uh, point in the meeting then where we would invite uh, comments from the public. I do have a blue card uh, from somebody in the audience. I'd like to recognize Deb Andrews to come up. Deb, you'll have five minutes. Thank you. Not tonight, thank you. My name's Deb Andrews. I live at 13th and A here in Lincoln. The sole purpose for the existence of Lincoln Public Schools is to prepare the next generation to lead America. Employers will tell you that competency is retiring with the baby boomers. It doesn't make it look very bright for America. Parents, grandparents, and neighbors are concerned their children are not being effectively taught reading and math. The foundational skills for reason and logic and all higher level learning. The National Assessment of Educational Progress scores reveal that Nebraska eighth grade students, about a third of them, are proficient at reading and math. The National Council on Teacher Quality in 2014 reported that Nebraska teacher preparation programs earned an overall score of D minus and failed to prepare education candidates to teach reading and math. A report just released June 22nd, 2016 from the National Council on Teacher Quality found that teacher prep programs fail to prepare future preschool teachers in essential classroom skills. At a dyslexia conference in 2015, an educator simply stated that preschool teachers are unfamiliar with phonics. Phonics is how the brain, over 50,000 years, has learned languages. The Lincoln median household income has risen only 10% in the last 10 years, while those below the poverty level has increased 48%. The upper middle class in the United States has expanded from about 13% in 1979 to 30% today. It's the largest it's ever been. The rich make up about 2% of the population, and that brings us back to the one-third of the population that has been taught reading and math to the proficient level. They're doing quite well. However, systems collapse when societies become overcomplicated and knowledge is refined only in a small elite. They're not flexible to meet stimuli. It's a concern. Our increasingly functionally illiterate and innumerate population is a drag on the economy, expands our prison population, and wreaks havoc in our society. 
The new federal government rules to open restrooms and locker rooms to both sexes, along with a just-released policy to instruct children birth to age five in their home language and separate culture will accelerate the chaos. LPS parent Lee Todd's column in the Lincoln Journal Star June 24th clearly made the case for parental rights in public education. The LPS board recently moved in the opposite direction on parental notification of controversial topics. Education has organized away from its constitutional function toward gaining control of the bureaucracy. I urge you to set aside a portion of your budget dollars for those parents that would like to have complete control over their child's education and choose those courses and curriculum which are in their child's best interest. Hold them accountable for results. I urge you, if need be, to contact your state senator to make that a possibility. Thank you. Thank you. I do not have any other blue cards. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board on the subject of the budget? Seeing none, uh, there is no request for a closed session. Therefore, we will uh, sit in recess until our regularly scheduled meeting at 6 o'clock. <laughs>